Kobe Makindi reveals how he got a role in a tribe called Judah. <laughs> This kind of operation will be operation we pursue the goal with ordinary eye. Our foe, the power weapon, she no, no gun. You don't farm, they go run few. Guys, any other one do, I feel like we will kill 100 people, no concern me. Gen, 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 gen. Action film. Actor, director, and movie producer Toby Mackinde in an interview with Hip TV discusses how he secured his role in the latest blockbuster movie, A Tribe Called Judah. Mackinde recounted his roles in both the scripting and pre production phases and emphasized how participating in the script's development enhanced his understanding of character development. I was part of the scripting process, so um, the whole character development and everything, you know, I was part of that process. So. I knew what I was in for and I was excited to do it because it is a break away from the norm. You understand? Um, it, people are used to seeing me playing a certain kind of character. So this was different and I needed to, you know, prove to people, I needed to tell people, let people know that I'm an actor first before anything else, you know, and I can do anything. You know, I, so it's not, a, it's not a matter of what my personality is, you know, in real life or um, how my face looks, because I know I, I can look like a nerd, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so I was excited that I was playing something different. I was excited that I was doing something challenging because, you know, there, there were so many things I had to do you know, to bring the character to life. You know, I had to smoke, I had to make my hair. These are things that are not natural to Toby Mackinde, you know. So it was, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience having to leave that character. So, yeah. Additionally, he delved into the purposeful approach to the PR of a tribe called Judah, stressing the impact of robust and consistent PR in both business and entertainment. The actor highlighted their continuous content creation from the pre-production to production and post-production. He noted Funke Akindele's dedication to effective PR strategies. In his words... Okay, so, um, yes, the PR was intentional. Please don't forget that um, Auntie Funke had done... Um, two movies back to back that has been record breaking. First was Omogeto the Saga, and then after two years, she came back and did Battle on Booker Street, and then he broke that record. So, definitely, there's a pattern to it. So, PR is something that I feel like the movie industry, Nollywood, you know, underrates, you know, and they feel like mm, the movie will push itself. The movie is good, it's good, it will push itself. No. It goes beyond that. Apart from, you know, just churning out good content, apart from, apart from doing a good movie, you also have to push it. You have to be dangle it in people's faces. Like, go and see it, go and see this movie, go and see it, go and see it. They, from the PR, the PR was aggressive. From the PR, there's no way you will not say that you've not heard about a tribe called Judah. Okay, now, you may not want to go and see it, and in your head you're like, I don't see Nigerian movies, oh, blah, 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 you know. But then, word of mouth is going around and it's telling, people are telling, this movie is the bomb, this movie is better than Hollywood movies. And then we, we keep dangling it in your face that, go and see this movie, say, go and see this movie. Continuously, consistently, at some point, even if you are not pushed to go and see the movie, a family member, a brother, a sister, an auntie will say, I've seen this movie. Come and see this movie. I, I mean, I, I, I still met someone yesterday, you know, that was saying that, ah, me, I've seen the movie like three times. So my husband has not seen it. He doesn't have time. But I'm telling him, I will still take him to the cinema. We'll still go with our children, you know. I still met someone today saying, ah, I will still go and see the movie, you know. So consistent PR, you know, it really helps. It's something that we underrate, but it works. It works and being intentional about it. So you ask that, was it before, was it? Yes, from before the movie. I mean, already from even the scripting process, we knew that certain lines will trend. We knew that 
we needed to add certain things in the script that will be very relatable, that people will shall tap into it, you know? It, it's, it was something that, was, that we were intentional about. I remember Auntie Funke would be like, put it, ah, people would like him. <laughs> Testimony and Ijiro, people will like their love. Put it, put it. Let us say, ah, testimony, I love you now. You know, and things like that. So we knew that there were certain lines that would trend. And then during filming, you know, we don't take BTS for granted. BTS, you know, everywhere, we're always banting. We're, and because, I mean, we are professionals, and, and this is something that Funke likes to do when she's working with certain actors. In fact, when she's working on a project, she puts the actors together, probably in the same house. You know, we eat together, we relate. So it's not like, oh, everybody's diva and they're in their rooms, and then it, it's just time for you to come on set, and then you come. No, we play. We actually play games. We laugh together, you know. So those contents, put together as BTS is something that people would love to see, especially after they've seen the movie and they're like, oh, no wonder, that's why there's so much bond. That's why they gel. That's why they're like, you know, you know, they are very cool. So those things were intentional. And then after the project, so many contents, so many content. Auntie Funke doesn't play when it comes to marketing and movies. She does not play. She goes all out, you know, importing all the merch, all the hoodies, everything, you know, giving, and then, yeah, talking about the merchandise, that's something, again, that attracts people, that's something that people love, like, ah, that shirt, that shirt that Fouquet is wearing, I like it, it's very fine, ah, they gave us at the cinema today, ah, eh, ah me too, let me go, let me, so that I will collect my own, jige, these are things that, you know, attract people, these are, apart from the fact that the content is good, but first, the content has to be good, the movie has to be good, you know, and then all these things will will then work. Yeah. Speaking about his ability to portray spontaneous acting skills in a movie, he explained that his on-screen persona is essentially the opposite of his real self. To embody the tout role, he divulged that he meticulously observed portable, mastering the art of impersonation. This role, he noted, was a departure from his usual on-screen typecasting. He also touched on the most challenging aspect of the script in the movie. I I took. <laughs> I took every scene personal, <laughs> you know? Um, I mean, it, I've always made it my culture, even right from when I was upcoming, that any role I play, no matter how small it is, even if it is one scene, I'll play it with all of my heart, you know? So if, if I was playing, you know, being an extra with all of my heart, what would happen when now I get the opportunity to star in the film and I want to like the lead actors, of course. I'll play it with all my soul and all my heart. So yeah, every scene was, was you know, challenging because like I said before, this character is a break away from the norm. It is a totally different person from who I am in reality. Me, I'm a church boy, I'm a nerd. If you naturally see me, do you get? So I had to, um, I had to, I won't say I had to go inside to, you know, bring out the tout in me. There is no tout in me anywhere, other than the fact that I can speak Yoruba and I can impersonate. So when I listen to people, I can, okay, pretend to be like those people. So what I did, you know, was to have a reference, you know. That's one of the things actors do to get into character. And my own reference was portable, to be, to be honest. At... A few months to when we started filming, I followed Portable on Instagram and I started following his content. I was liking his posts because he, apart from the fact that he makes me laugh, he speaks sense even in his, you know, in his nonsense or in his funny, in his own funny way, you know. And then I was tapping from, you know, his mannerisms and everything. I was always putting him on my Insta story. I'm sure people will feel like uh, Toby is just catching clues. But to be honest, I was preparing myself for the role, you know. I was learning lambas, you know. I was learning, you know, his nuances, his mannerisms, his, you know, the way he speaks and all of that, you know. And that was what helped me. I, him being my reference was what helped me get properly into the character. Every scene was quite difficult, but I, I feel like the most you know, difficult for me 
or the most challenging, let me not say difficult, is you know, the scene where I broke a bottle, like at, at the beginning of the movie, where we had to fight somebody that was fighting our mom. You know, I've never broken a bottle in my life before. I learned it on that day. Or, you know, and you know, so imagine trying to be in character because I like to be the best at what I do. And for Christ's sakes, I was surrounded by A-listers from Timini Egbusen to Jide Kene to Olumide Owuru to Uzi Usman to Auntie herself in Sekbe Etim, Uzo Arukwe. So I, I knew that I needed to bring my A game. I knew that I needed to be, you know, outstanding. So, so trying to, to be in that character and then still trying to be conscious, not to get injured, you know, when I break the bottle, you know, and then still maintain character was quite difficult. I was trying to find the balance, but to the glory of God, you know, God helped me. That scene and the scene where, you know, we went to the site to collect money and I was saying, Mame o God oku, that scene was, it was crazy. I remember Auntie Funke calling me to the side and said, Toby, you must kill it, you must kill it. God don't impress me, kill on share, kill on share, you know, and this is a disciplinarian. So <laughs> I remember that scene and in my head, I mean, it, I, I, I'm good with psyching people up. So when she psyched me, I now went to the corner to psych myself again. I told me, ah, kill on share now, oh yeah, oh yeah, get into character, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's an emotional scene. We must show that you get. So those two scenes were quite challenging and I thank God that it came out well and you know people loved it. Those are like some of the scenes that people make reference to. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about how everything turned out. Toby McIndy revealed that it had always been the ambition of the producers that a track called Judah would net one billion naira at the box office. He declared it a dream come true for the movie to surpass all expectations and become the first movie in Nigeria box office history not only to hit but exceed the billion naira mark. To, to, to be honest, I was, I was excited. I was beyond overwhelmed. First off, you know, because of the fact that I'm a part of a groundbreaking project, you know, as an actor. So in my head, I'm like, wait, so in 2024 now, they'll say, yeah, yes, grossing actors. You know, say Toby Mac in the, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> you know? So of course I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. Of course I knew that the movie was going to do numbers. I knew from the script, I knew. You know, you know, you know a good project from the script. I knew it was going to do numbers. I knew that by the grace of God, it was going to do one, one billion. I mean, that was the prayer. But it actually hitting one billion was now, you know, like some sort of realization that wait, what we were praying for, you know, has actually happened, you know, and beyond and even more. The president is, you know, commending the hard work. The governor is commending Peter Obi, Atiku, so many people. So it was like, wow. And then the boss, the, the, trust me, my DM is on fire. Like, you know, people come in to say, Shinena, you did so well. I'm like, ah, really? Even me, when I watch it, I'm like, ah, to be about to shit, eh, better. Do you get? I, 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 you know, I was feeling like I could have done some parts better, but even the little that I did, people are appreciating it. Like, I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm, I'm stunned. To be honest, I'm, I'm, and I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to God because this is, this is like a dream come true. This is, this is what I actually look forward to. I don't just want to be in a movie. I don't just want to act. I want to be seen. I want to be noticed. I want people to say, oh, yeah, 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 that guy, that guy, you did well. You get so. Toby McKinley strongly criticized the persons responsible for pirating the A Tribe Called Judah movie. Having broken the one billion naira box office received by Rare success, a pirated version of the movie surfaced. Toby McKinley lamented the ongoing, unceasing battle of piracy in the industry. He emphasized that although the team promptly removed the link, the damage had already been done as the pirated version had already gained a life of its own. It's, it's very sad that at this stage, you know, in our industry, we are still battling with piracy. Like, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be. It's like, I don't know how to put this. It's like, 
basically spoiling someone's business, you know? I mean, we were at the verge of hitting one billion. And then I started seeing DMs and people telling me that, look, there's a tribe called Judah, there's a link they're watching on Telegram. I'm like, what is this? You know, and then of course, the team started working on, you know, bringing down the um, um, link and all of that. But then it had gone viral and all of that. To be honest, it's sad, it's very bad. And for people that watched it, via that link too. You people too, you are not left out. You are, you, are, you are the problem we have in this society. Why will you watch? Why can't you go to the cinema and contribute to the revenue of Lagos State of Nigeria and, you know, contribute to the success? Do you get, like, it's, it's very bad. And, and it's so funny that in my DMs, I see people tagging me on the pirated, on the pirated, like people watching it on their TV. And I'm like, Yo, this is very wrong. Why are you? Why did you download it? Why did you even? Whoever created the link, whoever did that, is very wrong. It's very bad. It's very criminal of you. And if they catch you, you are going to jail. I'm just warning you. <laughs> you know, it's it's very wrong to be honest. You are, it's spoiling business. And like I said, it's very sad that we're still having to struggle with piracy. You know, we have moved from the era of DVDs, VCDs you know, we're in a more digital era. Why should we still be pirating? I mean, why can't you just wait till, it, even if you can't go to the cinema, wait till it comes on Prime Video, wait till it comes on Netflix. I mean, these subscriptions, they are very cheap, very cheap, 4,000, 1,000, two, you, you know, just wait, it's, it's very bad. So, I, I mean, I don't subscribe to it. It's, it's, it's very, it's a very wrong thing. <laughs> Guys, any other one do I feel like we'll kill hundred people, no consign me. Action film.